Welcome back to a series of conferences on contemplative lifestyle. I am Father John Francis Sikvera, a Carmelite priest belonging to Karnataka Goa province in India. The theme of our conference today is the dark night of senses. Dear friends, in the previous conference we spoke about how a person has to go through a doorway or a moment of crisis in between each intermediate stages of the growth of spiritual life. That is, between via purgativa, via illuminativa and via unitiva. And why this crisis is a necessary requirement for further transformation of one's spiritual life. The dark night is an expression that St. John of the Cross uses to describe this crisis that comes across during this entire mystical journey. St. John of the Cross divides the entire mystical journey into two parts. That is, the dark night of the senses and the dark night of the spirit. The dark night of the senses is further subdivided into two parts. That is, active night of the senses and the passive night of the senses. Similarly, the dark night of the spirit too is further subdivided into two parts. That is, the first active night of the spirit. The second one is the passive night of the spirit. Let us discuss then what actually happens at each of such situations. In this conference, we will deal only with the dark night of senses and in the next conference, we will be dealing both with the via illuminativa, the way of the proficient and the dark night of the spirit. In fact, John of the Cross calls the entire mystical journey as dark night and calls each of the doorways with a qualifying name as we have seen above. He says that there are three reasons for which this entire journey made by the soul to union with God is called night. The first has to do with the point from which the soul begins the journey. For it has gradually to deprive itself of the desire for all the worldly things which it possesses. By denying them, this denial and deprivations are as it were night to all the senses of man. The second reason has to do with the mean or the road along which the soul must travel to this union, that is faith, which is likewise as dark as night to the understanding. The third has to do with the point to which it travels, namely God, who is equally is dark night to the soul in this life. These three nights must pass through the soul or rather the soul must pass through them in order that it may come to the divine union with God. We have seen that the spiritual journey begins with the conversion of the heart. Realizing that God loves one so much and how profitable it is to respond to God's love, one begins the spiritual journey through the imitation of Christ. Here one also realizes that because of the nature of one's life that is lived in accordance with the worldly standards and not according to God's will, how much one has been corrupted and faculties misused and abused, which St. John of the Cross calls the inordinate appetites of the soul. Hence, one begins the spiritual journey by purifying oneself of all the external senses, internal senses of imagination, fantasy, associated memory, and then the spiritual faculties of the memory, intellect, and will. 
Meanwhile, one also purifies oneself from all that is not true self, which is called ego, and all the manifestations of ego, which are pride, lust, anger, jealousy, greed, gluttony, and sloth. To leave the pleasures of the world all of a sudden and deprive them from all pleasures, it not easy but painful and dark for the senses. This painful exercise, which a person takes up upon himself or herself in order to grow in the likeness of Christ, therefore is spiritual, therefore is called the active night of the senses. Active because it is taken up by the person who wants to pursue spiritual life. Night because it is deprived of earthly, earthly pleasures for the senses. However, the person in pursuit of spiritual life could still go through this painful stage because of the deep determination one has at this time of his life and more so because of the tremendous love which God awakens within one's heart for himself helps the person to move forward with enthusiasm and love. St. John of the Cross says, Just as a loving mother who warms her child with the heat of her bosom, nurses it with good milk and tender food and caresses it with her arms, so does our God nurture us in the initial stages. Dark Knight, Book 1, Chapter 1, Number 2 As the time goes on, God has to educate the child for higher stages of life. Thus God begins the act of purification of the soul in love, which we call the passive night of the senses. The imagery continues as St. John of the Cross puts it. The mother cannot keep the child always close to her breast. As the child grows older, the mother withholds her caresses and hides her tender love. She rubs bitter aloes on her sweet breast and sets the child down from her arms, letting it walk on its own feet, losing its mother and walking alone is painful and distressing for the child, but a necessary step for its growth. Dark Knight, Book 1, Chapter 1, Number 2 but from now on, God communicates to the soul in a new way, not through the senses, but through the spirit. God is weaning the soul from the delicate and sweet food of the infants and makes it to eat coarse bread, which is the food of the strong. We should remember that one cannot go grow in perfection just by loving God with one's senses and emotions. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. John chapter 4, verse 24. This is a work impossible for human beings. Therefore, God himself, with the love and tenderness, does it for those who please him. This Passive dark night, says St. John of the Cross, is a privation of all sensible appetites for the external things of the world, the delights of the flesh, and the gratification of the will. This is known as the passive purification of the senses because it is principally the action of God, while the human person is receptive. Remember? In addition to the passive purification, one also enters into the active night of purification by renouncing all sensible pleasures, such as seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, renouncing and remaining empty 
of all sensory satisfaction, which is the most painful. The privation of sensible pleasures can have repercussions on the unconscious life of an individual, which sometimes rises in revolt. It has to be recalled that even in Zen Buddhism, speaks of a hallucinatory stage called Makiyo, literally means the world of the devil. St. John of the Cross speaks about fourfold possible rewards of the unconscious self at this stage. John writes, the devil often pervades objects to the senses. He does so to entice persons through these sensory objects in many evils. In other words, the devil can deceive the soul through the spiritual deceit, even to the extent of demonstrating spiritual visions in order to dissuade the persons from God in and through the conceit of the spiritual pleasure. Again, there can be revolt of sexuality, because it is the easiest and the most handy mechanism one has at its disposal for pleasure. Again, there can also be temptations to hate God, or occasions the devil brings to make one to hate God, such as the death of a near one in one's life. Finally, there can be scruples and perplexities. The excellent advice that St. John of the Cross gives us is this. Pay no attention to all these things mentioned above. Rather, stay quietly with the imageless wisdom that lies hidden in the depths of your soul. Can recourse to spiritual counseling, encouragement, but finally, be content simply by peaceful and loving attentiveness to God. Remember, at this stage, the inner peace and tranquility will never leave you. Slowly, but steadily, says St. John of the Cross, the night passes and the dawn comes. The person now enters in the stage of the proficient. In this new state, as one liberated from the cramped prison cell, the person goes about thinks of God with much more freedom and satisfaction of the spirit and with more interior delight. At this stage, they experience a new flow of joy even in the senses, not by the exterior senses, but by the overflow of the communication of God. Here, the interior senses are awakened. Thus one has a rich way of seeing, hearing, smelling, etc. This stage can continue for a long time or it can be very short. We will deal with this stage in the stage of the proficient and the dark night of the spirit. The passive night of senses brings along with it a lot of benefit for the soul, although apparently it may look like only pain. First of all, there is a moment of growth, a moment of weaning. Because of this weaning, one comes to the better awareness of oneself and one's weaknesses, one's miseries, at the same time one's strengths. Humility, therefore, is a virtue that grows out of it as a new bloomed flower. It is interesting to see that one's focus now is no longer on one's ego and its manifestations which are the seven capital sins. Rather, the focus now is the virtues opposing those seven deadly sins. A person grows now in humility, purity, patience, fortitude, kindness, temperance and diligence. The initial pride which a person manifested, thinking that he or she was better than the other, vanishes. Dark Knight, Book 1, Chapter 2, Number 1. 
Rather, at this moment, one begins to think that others are better than oneself and are ready to be taught by others. This is the authentic manifestation of humility. Similarly, at this moment, their intentions become pure and authentic, prepared to collaborate and cooperate with anybody in good works. And when they see their own imperfections and human limitations, they are not surprised, but accept with humility. They entrust themselves to God who will not abandon them. They also withdraw from every type of sensible delights that come from spiritual exercises. As a result, any type of excessive avarice is withdrawn. Instead, they may falter for want of fervor. At this moment, all spiritual exercises are done by submitting themselves to the will of God. They are even freed from spiritual lust due to dryness, lack of sensible delight. They are also freed from spiritual gluttony. Slowly, they lose their tendency for such sensible delight and they are left with peace and tranquility. They are taken to the realm of the habitual presence of God and hence even dread on turning back from spiritual path. Faced with dryness, they learn the virtue of meekness towards God and neighbor and thus overcome their anger. Becoming aware of their own limitations, they no longer nurture envy towards others. They try to do good and try to do always God's will. Hence they are ever diligent to please God. At this juncture, the divine inflow is delicate and may not stimulate their senses. They have obtained the liberty of the Spirit and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Thus they get liberated from their enemies, that is the world, the flesh and the devil. Thereby their natural concupiscence and vigor slowly gets calmed down and they experience deep silence within them. Their yearning for God becomes so great, any spiritual benefit resulting from this dark night, they would just exclaim, O oh, sheer grace. It is amazing, my dear friends, to see how God nurtures the one who is ready to be taught by none other than God himself. God is ready to fill the hearts of the one with his own love, who is ready to give one's heart to him. How great is our love for God? How great is our God, how loving and how merciful. Open your heart to him today so that he can transform you in his likeness. God bless you.